Hey everyone, I introduce you all to my new personal assistant, Jarvis. What's really amazing about Jarvis is that he's built entirely from free components and APIs crafted from scratch as well. He's got some serious skills too. Jarvis knows my schedule inside and out and manages all my meetings that he can set up new ones as well whenever I ask him to. He, he can access my monitor to explain what's happening on my screen. Also is hooked up to my webcam so that I'm safe and also explain what is going around me as well. Plus, I've given him access to my clipboard. So whenever I have a question, I can just copy the content and he's on it. And that's just the beginning. He's a great fun companion. He's a great teacher. And the best part is that all of these capabilities of his are powered by completely free components. Let's dive into the system architecture to see how these pieces fit together. And then we'll go on to the code so that you can build your own Jarvis. The architecture of Jarvis involves several free components, several key components, each with its own unique task. First, we record the user's voice to capture the command. And then we transcribe the audio using an open source version of OpenAI's Whisper. And the best part is that it's even faster. Next comes the heart of the Jarvis where it is function calling and function execution. Jarvis has lots of capabilities with each as function and we use large language models to understand the user's command which was obtained by transcribing the user's audio and then we'll call the appropriate function to get the job done. These functions access the tools that helps Jarvis to complete the tasks provided. After executing the right tools, the LLM generates a response based on the function's output as well as the user's input. Finally, the generated response is converted into an audio and is played back to the user. Now we have broken down the components involved, but it is time to go one step further and understand what is going on behind each component and how you can create this architecture so that you can also bring this architecture to life. Stay tuned because by end of this video, you'll see just how powerful and accessible creating your own personal assistant Jarvis can be. Guys, before moving on to the code, it is only fair that you understand what is the result we are going to obtain out of this video. So let's see a demo of Jarvis and then we'll see what to do next. Wake up, Jarvis. I'm awake and ready to assist you. How can I help you today? Jarvis, what are the meetings I have today? Your next meeting is on 2024-05-31 at 21.30. Zero event, Jarvis Part 2 discussion. Okay, Jarvis. Can you help me schedule a meeting? Okay, now it's asking me the date and other information. Probably uh, we can soon add this capability as um, like so that it will ask and then it will parse something like that. Right now I haven't had added those kind of capability to ask input dynamically. Okay, so here I'm providing the date as 1 June and time probably 08.00 AM. And then the time ending up is 0900 AM. And then the title would be Jarvis created, something like that. Okay. By the end of this demo, I'll also show you that this event is created by Jarvis. Okay. For now, let's click this enter and it will ask me the access which I'm going to provide right now. And I have provided it. So it should say that the event creation is successful. And here you can see it is shown the event. Great Jarvis. Jarvis, what do you see in my screen? The programming project in progress showing code related to the data management and game control application. Jarvis, what do you see in my webcam? This is my grandfather actually. 
It appears to be a serene room with a framed photo of a man on the wall adorned with flowers. The room contains various objects, including a sign, papers, and figurines. The overall atmosphere suggests a space for contemplation or worship. Amazing, Jarvis. Jarvis, what do you see in my clipboard? It appears to be the contents of your clipboard. As you can see, I have just copied actually. It's an HTTP request made to the Grok API to create the chat completion. Amazing, Jarvis. How about uh, let's take a break and have some coffee? Is it fine by you? Virtual pause to assist you anytime you'd like to resume our tasks. Okay, before ending, I would like to know about your thoughts on yourself as Jarvis. Assistant, I'm designed to provide helpful responses and assist with tasks to the best of my abilities. I don't have personal thoughts or feelings, but I strive to continually improve and adapt to your needs. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, explain to me like a like that I'm a ch child about what is artificial intelligence. Okay, imagine you have a super smart magic friend who can help you with anything. Artificial intelligence or AI like me is like a special kind of computer program that can think and learn like a person. But instead of having a heart, brain and body like you do, I'm just a collection of code and data that can help you with tasks and answer questions. I can remember things, recognize patterns and even talk to people like we're having a conversation right now. But I don't have feelings or emotions like humans do. I just exist to make your life easier and more fun. Isn't that A-M-A-Z-I-N-G, sir? Ha, you are funny, man. Yeah, uh, thank you for the explanation, Jarvis. Take a rest. I'll be here when you need me, ready to assist and respond to your queries. Take care, sir. Bye, Jarvis. So, yeah, guys, uh, hope you would have liked the potential of Jarvis shown here. This is just a starting point of what we'll achieve at the end of the series because. This is going to be a series of videos where I'll be adding more capabilities to Jarvis as shown in the tasks.txt file here. I'll be providing access to file system, providing access to different file applications, search websites and uh, get the weather alarm screenshot. Basically, for who, whatever things we would need a personal assistant, every capability will be provided. You could have seen, right? Right now, he was able to schedule a meeting in Google Calendar and that's what we are going to see now. As you can see here, guys, this was my existing meeting that I have a discussion from 9.30 to 10.30 p.m. on Jarvis part 2 discussion, which it found out. All right. But if I go to ja uh, June 1, right? Here you can see Jarvis test meeting. It created by itself actually. Okay. And that's what I like. And here you can see in another meeting which I showed in live right now which is Jarvis created. Okay. Jarvis test meeting was a meeting which I tried to create by myself. And then we have Jarvis created which is 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. Like I gave in the meeting uh, on the command line before. So... You can see that there is a tremendous potential here. So now that you have an understanding about the architecture, the potential of Jarvis, I think it's a high time that I go to the code right now because I think you would all be interested to know about how you can create an assistant like this by yourself, that too with free components. So yeah, guys, uh, just now we completed seeing the potential of Jarvis and also we saw the architecture which we need to create to create such a powerful assistant and we shall see now the code by which you can also create a Jarvis like this. So before going on to the code guys I would like to ask you all a request of please hit the like button if you haven't hit because uh, this video took, uh, takes a lot of effort and uh, it would be very nice if you can appreciate that with the help of a like and share it with your friends who you think might benefit from this video. Also, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe because only 30% of the viewers who are watching the video right now are subscribed. 
so if you consider the channel this channel is useful please subscribe the channel i hope you all like this video right now let's go into the content now to create this kind of uh, assistant which is very powerful we would need multiple files as you could have seen here there are lots of files and we'll go inside each file following the code in here okay if you remember the architecture the first one would be to record audio and then transcribe and then function call function execution generate response um text to speech which is generate audio probably and then play audio this is the architecture and that is what is implemented here in different functions you could have seen here record audio play audio transcribe audio generate response text to speech all right all of those core component is ready and all of these extra capabilities are provided as functions okay other than this we have a colorama library to give some color while logging um in the demo you would have seen some teal color as well as some yellow red different color kind of colors right those were due to the help of this colorama library and you need to initialize that so for that we have in init library logging to log time to have some time being logged okay and then we have uh, some other util functions like delete file and then here we have the find function which is the function call file okay next we have an api key manager in which we can store our api key we have a function called get transcription api key get response api key get tts api key which is nothing but your text to speech api key and here are the capabilities right now which will add in future and probably when i add in future this project will be rewritten in some other way like i said this is just the project first in a series okay here i have the class jarvis in which we are going to initialize the assistant with the help of this system prompt in which we are going to say you are jarvis close similar to the same jarvis in iron man movie you are a helpful assistant Keep your answers short and concise. I am Basant, your boss, who is an AI engineer. Address me only as sir. Okay. This is the prompt which you are saying, and that's why when I asked, uh, it will say like I'm in Stark residence, something like that, and all. Okay. If I hadn't said like you are in the say you are the same uh, Jarvis in the Iron Man movie, it wouldn't have said that. Okay. So now uh, we are getting the three transcriptions AP, three API keys, which is transcription API key, response API key. Response API key is nothing but your uh, LLM API key, and then we have text to speech API key. And for each, what we are going to use is that for transcription, we are going to use Faster Whisper, a local model of OpenAI Whisper, but it is faster than OpenAI Whisper actually. We are going to run distal whisper and you will see that when I call the functions actually. Okay. And for response generation LLM, we are going to use Llama 3 running on Grok. And for text to speech, we are going to use DeepGram. Okay. For all of these, there are free API keys. At some point of time, it will become paid. That's fine. At that time, probably we can rewrite this. And that's why I made this kind of a structure. Okay. Whenever we have a problem, for example, if I want to change text to speech, right? All I need to go is going to text to speech. I can change it to PyTTSX so that we won't be depending on DeepGram. Okay. So this uh, code is very extensible and very, you know, uh, you can easily change the code uh, whenever you want and however you want. That's how the code is written. So yeah, uh, no problem. Now, uh, this is another function, which is def response generation, which we'll come to later. Because the function which we need to look is run Jarvis. You can see here. If underscore underscore name is equal to underscore underscore main, Jarvis equal to Jarvis. I'm creating an instance of the class and while true, just to make sure it continues the conversation, Jarvis dot run Jarvis. Okay. So I'm just running the Jarvis, which will start to record the audio first. Let's go into that function. In record audio function, we are getting the file path, timeout, Fresh time limit and retries. First, I'll explain the code. Along with that, when we are going into the listen function, I'll explain the parameters as well. Okay. We are creating a recognizer instance, which will just recognize the microphone and then it will, you know, uh, listen to it. Listen via that microphone. Okay. It will recognize my audio and then it will listen to my audio. Okay. So for that, we are using speech recognition library. And it's not that always you will 
be able to record the video or the audio rather in the first attempt itself. So we have three attempts where we'll try to in make an instance of microphone which will be our source and we'll log it as recording started and here we have the recognizer.listen function in which you will provide the source which is your microphone and timeout is nothing but for example I want to ask a question like wake up Jarvis all right if I say that after five seconds it should be waiting for five seconds and uh, it is fine what if I waited make it wait for 50 seconds it is just time waste for us also right so the timeout is how much time will be given for a phrase to start that is timeout okay and the phrase time limit is nothing but how much time is allowed for the recording for example i can record up to 20 seconds right now that is what is given here phrase time limit is equal to 20 and i should start at least by 3 seconds retry is also 3 allowed okay you can change this but uh, it's fine in this configuration itself so once the audio is recorded we'll log it as recording is complete and we'll write that audio in, as a wav file that is what is stored in here Okay, it would, have, it would have been stored in here, which I deleted, all right. It would be uh, in the file path you saved, dot .wav, okay. Dot .wav extension file will be saved here. But we'll also do some exception handling here, where we'll state that, okay, here the listening timed out, we'll retry it. And if you are not able to record the audio itself, then we'll say fail to record audio. And if the try is also over, because the try except completes here, we'll state it as, okay. Uh, logging that error recording failed okay so that's how we will record the audio and now we saw how to record the audio okay your audio is now ready next step is to transcribe that audio right so we have the transcribe audio function in which here if you see i'm providing the output file path as input that wav and that would be a parameter to the transcribe audio function as well where you will get model API key and audio file part and for model you should go to the config okay here you need to provide your configuration for the whole architecture here so what are the uh, models or what are the components you will require for recording again we are going with some python class and for playing also we are going with some python class so what are the things which are required right now transcription output generation and then again convert that that into an audio so for this we are going to use three different model for transcription model we are going to use a local model which is faster whisper okay and how to install faster whisper all you need to do is just do pip install faster whisper okay and then we have the response model which is grok okay in grok i'm running llama 3 and uh, for that you will need an api key as well for text to speech model we are going to use deepgram <coughs> okay so these are the things which are going to be used as components and you need to provide your api keys here as well okay I, I have already kept my api key but you should also provide yours okay so make sure that your configuration file is set okay these are just some checks um, you need not worry about these checks at all okay it will work as long as you provide the api key so now we'll see the transcribe audio function where you are providing the model to be local and the API key is already provided, which won't be needed right now. But uh, it has been heard that Grok is going to soon provide uh, whisper access to everyone. So for that, I have already provided um, the code in which you can use Grok as well instead of local model, making it very scalable. Okay. And then we have the audio file path. Okay. So it, since it is local, we will see the local now. Here I already created a whisper model which is whisper model from faster whisper library in which I'm just using the distal small dot en model running on CPU and intake. You could have seen the response was too soon right like it converted into text very soon but it was running on my CPU not my GPU actually. Okay. So the transcript function takes four different parameters one is audio file path, beam size, what is the beam size to be used for recording, what is the language which is English and condition on previous text as an another parameter okay so here we have a list known as transcriptions because whisper model is very good that it happens in real time okay it will do the transcription in segments and so what we'll do is we'll get each segment text and then we'll combine those 
by appending those into the transcriptions uh, list and then joining the those as a string okay so that is how you'll transcribe the audio and that is written here okay and that is what we return those are the transcription okay if there is any other problem for example your model is not there we'll say unsupported transcription model and if you go with any other error we'll say okay fail to transcribe transcribe the audio due to this error and we'll return that okay error in transcribing audio okay so that is about transcribe audio function and once you get the transcription right your user input ready so we are going to log that with the help of logger okay we'll say that you said this thing okay now you have your um command user command so what do we know? do next we need to find the appropriate function and then make that function call okay so for that we are going to use the find function function where i have formatted a string here okay where i have said you have access to a lot of uh, python functions which provide you the capability to do a uh, lot of uh, tasks here are the functions all you need to do is provide the functions here and the purpose here if you add any other function just don't do any problem just say and then do just this that's all and if it is thinking that this is reliable it will go into that okay so how that happens also we'll see now but right now if you see um i have provided the get events function which is to know the list of events and meetings i have create event function to create meetings explain webcam to access my webcam capture it and then explain what is going on around via my webcam same goes for screen same goes for clipboard prompt as well to know to just i uh, have an access to whatever i have copied as content and explain that in general to make sure that if any of these are not matched it will try to answer based on its knowledge itself without using any tools probably in future we'll add rag with website access and all that is for future okay now i'm saying okay now based on the for function provided and description provided written the function name that suits to do a given task as follows okay i need an output like function is to function name that's all i'm not even asking the uh, parameter you know i'm just asking function name so here in grok we are going to use grok but a different instance okay that response model is different this is different this is function calling model for function calling mixtrel is said to be better than llama 3 so i used mixtrel where i'm saying the system from that you are great in accessing tools and for user we are saying okay this is the string okay we are going to provide the string and ask it to provide the answer okay here we are providing temperature zero streaming is set make to be set to false because in json mode streaming is not supported and in response format i'm asking a json object okay so that it will be easier to pass but in json also it will be returning a json string we need a json dictionary so all you need to do is just call ast.literallyval and then we'll call the chat completion dot choices of zero dot message dot content okay this will have the output and we'll say okay this is the function okay but make sure that you also have your uh, grok api key exposed via os.environ function like this okay os.environ of grok api key equal to an empty string i have provided here you should fill your api key there so that is the function call okay now you'll know the function okay which function is there but you need to execute that function right so for that i have already provided a function known as response generation okay if you go into there it will take two parameters one is function to perform and then another one is user input in function to perform it will be just input for if conditions okay in future i'll probably make this also automated by help of exec python function which will be executing uh, any python code when it is a string okay that is also possible uh, probably i'll do that in the future but right now i'm just making if condition where the function is decided by llm by itself okay this is not just a simple if condition it is an if condition decided by llm okay where i'm checking the function here you can see create event or get event or explain webcam and based on this you can add anything you want okay in all of those there are some commonality okay we'll have a chat history here you can see the system prompt is already provided and you need to append the user input along with the response text of assistant as well so that 
the LLM remembers what is going on in the chat history. Okay, so make sure that once you get an input or get an output, you will append that into chat history because this will be repeated in all if conditions. I'm not I'm not going to explain those actually. Okay, so the first thing here is for get events, I'm having a function called get events itself. I'm planning a separate video on different Google capabilities actually. So accessing my Google Drive, accessing my Gmail. At the time, I'll explain in detail about this thing. Okay. Right now, uh, I would even suggest, you know, uh, you can comment these two or, you know, if you want me to explain in detail, let me know in the comment section. I'll try to make the video on Google APIs very soon because this takes a lot of time uh, to set up the account and then get a lot of access to it. And as you can see, uh, there are lots of codes in here. Okay. I'm planning a separate video on Google uh, automation itself. Okay. I'll be focusing on drive, Gmail, uh, Google Sheets. Uh, also, I'll probably do uh, Google Calendar, Google Meet, where, for example, if I create an event now, right, it will just log it in my Google Calendar. But if I create an event, it can schedule a meeting and also add that as in the calendar. So for that, it will take a lot of time. So I'm probably planning a separate video on that. If you all uh, want that, please let me know in the comment section. I'll make a video on that. And that time itself, I'll explain this as well. Okay. Right now, we'll start with the explain webcam. If you think, right, uh, I, if you have thought, okay, Vasant, you said Grok Lama 3, how it would have seen my your webcam. And also you said it is going to be free. If you have thought that, it's a great thought. Applause to you all. And here, what I'm doing is, I'm using an another LLM or a VLM rather, which is Lava Phi 3 run on Olama. I've already made a video on Olama VLM inference. So if you want to know in detail about that, uh, please check out the video. The link will be in the description. Okay. So here I'm having different functions. So I'll explain those. Okay. For Olama, it is very important that you have an image as a base 64 string. Okay. So we have a function for converting the image into base 64 where it will save the image as a buffered image first and then uh, in the format of JPG and then it will convert into base 64. Okay. And here uh, we have provided a function to display that image and image preprocess function will do all the preprocessing. Once you give, in the, give the image path, it will convert into RGB, convert into base 64 and then it will plot it and it will also return the image base 64 string. The most important thing would be chat with the image function where we'll first image uh, preprocess the image and we'll call the lava model in which we, you need to call the bind, which will combine the lava model with the context of image. Okay. Where you will provide the image. So that is its environment now. Okay. Lava has the image as its environment and you can ask any question to that right now. Okay. Probably we can make this as a chatbot. If you want, let me know at that as well. I'll probably make a separate video on that. By the way, guys, like, like I said, this assistant can be developed for on and on and forever. And then we'll be able to not even touch our laptop or computer for that matter. Okay. But here there are two specific functions, which I've used. One is explain webcam. Another one is explain screen for webcam. I need an access to my webcam and for screen. I have an, I need an access to my screen. Okay. For webcam, all you need to do is just run this explain webcam function in which first you'll go into the capture webcam where you'll capture one specific frame from this webcam. But if you want, you can also make this as a video by just changing the logic a bit. Okay. Where you'll store the name as image.png. Okay. So here it will become image.png. And if you want to explain your screen, right? For that, you'll call the capture screen function where You'll call the image grab, which is a class from PIL itself. Okay. PIL is pillar library in that there is a grab function, which will grab your screen image, and then we'll convert that into RGB and we'll save it as, save it as image.png itself. And then we'll call the chat with image, which will preprocess, make an environment context, and then we'll ask the question. Okay. That's how explain webcam and explain screen happens. And then we have the clipboard. Okay. For clipboard, we have the clipboard prompt function in which all you need to do is just call the piper clip function. And then, um, 
there will be a function called paste which will paste whatever you have copied in your keyboard and then we'll check if it is a string okay because if you haven't copied anything we'll say nothing is there in the clipboard if there is a value which is copied for example this one if i copy right if i go and do um this one all i'll do is just see um where is notebook just do dummy dot i and b k i'll do this see here i'm copying this okay and if i run this now it will show you here you can see right it is showing me the uh, for whatever i've copied so that is how uh, you will access your clipboard as well and that's what we are giving here i'm formatting the input itself stating that okay this is my question and this is my clipboard content what is happening and what is what do you see in my clipboard something like that okay so now you know how clipboard is answered how is my screen related questions are answered how is my webcam related questions are answered now what if i don't have any of these and i want to ask a general question all you need to do is just call the uh, generate response function okay and here you can see right always if we call the generate response function all right always what we do is we'll just format the prompt and then we'll ask we'll call the generate response function that's all okay here also you can see the image caption or image question cap answer will be generated here and we'll ask the llm to make its own response based on the response generated by lava 53 okay because the response of uh, lama 3 will be always better than lava 53 right so we always call that okay always generate response will be called and the generate response function will have an instance of the grok client where you will provide your api key and uh, we'll call the lama 3 8 billion i'm not even using lama 3 70 billion for faster responses i'm using lama 3 8 billion and we'll just respond as response dot choices of zero dot message dot content which will provide the response okay so that's how you'll generate the response and then we'll add the response to assistant okay similarly it happens for everything even including general but what if none of these uh, tasks are matched for now it would be sorry sir unable to do the task provided okay that, that is just for handling the problem now you have your response okay what what is the next step for now we are just uh, logging that in cyan color stating that this is the response from the model and then we'll convert this response into a speech for, with the help of this text to speech function where you'll have deepgram okay all you need to do is go to deepgram website click new, create new api key and it will be creating it i think it's thousand or hundred credits i think thousand credits are for free yeah so i don't think we'll we are going to use thousand credits so it would be more than enough all right so in deepgram client you need to set your api key and then we have the speak options class where you can provide the options for your uh, conversion into <coughs> speech where the model is going to speak right so that's why they have kept it as speak options the model i have chosen is aura helios en because all the models i have heard uh, that is the model which is very close to jarvis voice so i have kept it as aura helios even en encoding is linear 16 and container is wav okay and we are storing the output or the speech as wav file okay that's what we have provided here output that wav okay along with it we are also providing the response text model name which is deepgram and then their api key okay all we need but is the output file path and the speak options okay along with this options as well so in the speak options we'll say okay text is text and then here also we have given provided the speak options all these are provided okay so that is the response but we are not gonna call the response anywhere right we have already saved it that is what we need we are generating the audio and then we'll play that audio later okay now the audio is generated and it is output that wav okay so we'll call the play audio function in which we are going to use pi game in uh pi game it has capability to uh, do anything for example creating a game actually it's very much easily possible with the help of pi game and in games music are a very big part so you can load music and all that's what we are loading okay 
in music we are loading the audio file and we are playing the audio okay so output.wav will be played and if the player is busy it will wait for a second and then we'll play so once the audio is played it will stop it okay if there is any error we'll say play fail to play audio along with the error and uh, if it is not due to pi game right we'll say okay there is an un unexpected error so this is the error that is handling the errors okay so that's how you'll play the audio and once your audio is played then yeah you are good if any of these places where you run the jarvis you face an error it will be showing okay an error occurred and then it will delete the input file and also if the output file is there it will also delete the output file okay so for this i have a utils file known as utils file known as delete file okay where you will re remove the file which is provided and if you are saying okay file is not found it will say okay file is not there and if you are don't have the permission it will say okay there is not any permission for this and if you still face any other errors you will say okay error deleting the file so this is just i've made sure that all of these are in try except so that you won't face any error and stop the program it will be continuing okay so that is how you will create jarvis and like i said uh, you are going to have a separate video already you can see it is already around 35 to 40 minutes video if i had explained about the calendar right it would be around like 50 55 minutes so i'm not i'm going to explain about the calendar separately in another video but if you all want uh, like i said all the automation on google let me know we'll do that as the next video in the series or if you want any other task right all i request you all to go through this task.txt and say what you want next okay probably provide five to six features and i'll make a video on that and like i said we'll have a membership special live where i'll create these features in live and then we'll record it those are all fine okay so i hope you all will like this video guys if you all like the video please hit the like button again i don't want to brass uh, nag you all again with asking like and all but that is how i can reach a lot of people so please hit the like button share it with your friends if you haven't subscribed to the channel please hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon so that you will get the notification for these kind of videos if you like these kind of videos and let me know your thoughts in the comment section i'll see you all in the next video guys until then cheers